Good morning, everybody. This is Steve Clemens, Vice President of Life Markets here at URL. Thanks for joining us on Friday, June 1st. Do appreciate everyone uh, who signed up for our meeting today. And uh, we got some uh, great information for you this morning. Uh, before I get started, I do want to let you know that we do have some handouts uh, for the meeting. Uh, so again, uh, if you've been on these meetings in the past, uh, we'll have some PDFs on the toolbar that you can download and save and in print uh, so you have some materials to kind of take along with you today. Uh, for any of you who are going to be listening on a recording after this presentation, please reach out to our Life Markets Department for the same materials. Uh, we have our intro to our Life Markets Department at URL, so who to call when you need a case uh, and you're working on a life, DI, long-term care case, um, who to call when you have uh, contracting commission needs or case management needs. Uh, we also have two pieces on bonuses going on, uh, a summer bonus that we have going on that starts today, runs through the end of August, uh, information on our new agent bonus as well. So any new agents to URL's life department in uh, would also qualify for an additional bonus. And then the two materials from our uh, our sponsor today for the meeting, which is Mass Mutual, um, and topics today on taming a bear market in retirement, as well as the historical dividends with Mass Mutual. So without further ado, I'd like to give special thanks to Mass Mutual, uh, to Carol Sexton, our brokerage director, for uh, bringing uh, Pat McCarran on the call today. Uh, so, Pat, I thank you for being on the call and for your presentation this morning. Um, for those new to URL, why URL? We like to say we're, we're big enough to matter, small enough to care. You know, we're a national brokerage that services agents all across the country. Uh, we're based in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We've been doing life brokerage for 31 years, as well as life brokerage, health, group health, annuities. Uh, long-term care, DI, Medicare. Uh, we provide training, support, bonuses to help you with your business. So if you're new to us, please certainly get on our website and uh, research us, give us a call, and we'll be happy to talk. So if you do go to our website, it's urlinsgroup.com. And when you first get there, you click on our Aries tab. It's that first uh, button. And from there, you can register for the website. Uh, click register now, and you can create a username and password. And then you'll have, uh, once you get granted access, you'll have full access to our website to search around and look at our materials. So for those of you who've been on our, on our meeting, I like to give a stat or quote of the day. Um, and I wanted to put this one out there. Just everyone knows the mass mutual brand in our industry. It's a double plus rating, the highest rating by AM Best. Uh, we know a quality company, but you know many of you know on participating whole life, there's a dividend that's paid. And while a dividend um, is not guaranteed, Mass Mutual has paid dividends to eligible participating policy owners every year since 1869. So that's 149 years of history. Although not guaranteed, you have a great history to back that up, 149 years of it, that they have paid dividends to their, to their policy owners. Now, 1869, all right, looking back, um, Ulysses S. Grant was sworn in as president in March of 1869. The golden spike was driven, uh, driven into the ground for the completion of the first transcontinental railroad. Boston University and Purdue University were both founded in 1869. And I believe on this date, uh, on June 1st, the Cincinnati Red Stockings played their first uh, professional baseball game. Obviously, they were the, the first fully professional baseball team in America. And Jesse James, the outlaw Jesse James, committed his first known bank robbery back in 1869. And Mass Mutual started paying dividends and hasn't stopped for 149 years. Pretty impressive. So today's topic is taming the bear market in retirement. 
Uh, Pat McCarran's here from Mass Mutual. He's going to touch on on those concepts as well as additional information that's helpful on Mass Mutual. So hopefully here we're going to change the presenter over to Pat and he will take over for the next part of the presentation. Pat, the floor is yours. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate the um, the opportunity this morning, and and obviously a great a great intro with our our dividend history. Um, it's pretty amazing when you start to think about everything that's happened since 1869, through world wars and depressions and and all the other ups and downs in the markets. And you know we continue to pay our our policy owners because they they own our company. So great intro. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. I think I have to click on show my screen. Yep. Let me know when you can see my. Uh, my my screen, Steve. I, I got you here, so we're we're good. Okay. So I'm going to just jump right into the concept. Um, this is one of the handouts that that Steve referenced, and just a quick background: taming the bear market is really just a, a variation of retirement supplements. So we always talk about creating an asset using, <clears throat> excuse me, using life insurance, and then leveraging that asset in retirement, right? The traditional retirement supplement. Uh, concept or discussion and taming the bear just puts a unique twist on that so you could even present the traditional retirement supplement to your uh, clients and then use this as a variation or you could use this as the um, as the, uh, the the initial pitch so I just want to go through the material here with you so the key here is that anytime there's a down market we're going to leverage the values in the life insurance policy to support income needs rather than selling off uh, equity positions, which, you know, of course, are going to be detrimental to your overall account balances if you're selling those off in, in down markets. So that's the, the general idea here. And so if we look at a, a case study, Ben's a 65-year-old. Um, he's got most of his, his assets, his retirement assets in a qualified account in an IRA. This this doesn't necessarily need to be in, in an IRA. Of course, we, you know, we're just talking about a brokerage position. It could be qualified or non-qualified, but we've chosen to show it in a IRA here. And if we take a look at the next 20 years and we kind of overlay actual S&P returns um, from 1973 to 1992, and we think about the returns going forward in Ben's account, it might look like um, the, the bar graph that you see here, we have five years where we have down markets. And again, the years immediately following those down markets, we're gonna to look to leverage another asset. And of course, that asset, as I mentioned, is gonna be life insurance cash values. Um, the average annual, annual return over the 20 year period was 12.75. Obviously a really good rate of return, but we, we wanna focus specifically on the impact of these down markets and what happens when we sell off uh, equity positions. All right, so Ben needs about $75,000 every single year uh, from this account. And obviously, being a qualified account, we have to consider RMDs. You know, this maybe brings in a level of complexity that, that isn't necessary for the concept, but, but that's the uh, case study that we've chosen here today. Um, again, you could just have a regular brokerage account, but he needs $75,000. It's going to be fully taxable as income, um, you know, at his tax bracket of 28%. And if he starts at age 65, you can see the bar graph, takes withdrawals, um, is cognizant of the RMD requirements. He's left with about 429,000, 430,000 by the end of the period at age 85. And he's taken out about 1.5 million um, over that period of time. He's satisfied his income requirements. You know, there's so much concern today about longevity risk. If we look at this, this bar graph and we say, okay, you know, he made it to 85, he's still got a substantial lump sum there, that's great, he's close to mortality, but you know, with people living much longer and this, this sensitivity around longevity risk, I would argue that maybe he's, he's headed toward depletion of this account and maybe it's not the best strategy. There's no Monte Carlo or anything um, tied to this, but you could probably run one uh, on, the, on the remaining balance out to say 95 or even 100 and see you know, what his, his withdrawal rate would be and, and how long that account would last. All right, so if we modify the approach, you can see the, the red arrows or, or, or delta symbols there. 
in the years where we're going to take value from the life insurance policy to support uh, Ben's income needs and just a dramatic difference in his ending balance, right? 2.6 million versus uh, 430,000 roughly. And all we did is we, we said, listen, we're not going to sell off our equity positions after a down market and we're gonna draw income from another source. So that's, that's really the, the crux of the, the concept here. Uh, but you can see in the numbers how powerful this will be with our clients. You know, if you sit down and say, listen, I know everybody's concerned about longevity risk. You got a lump sum at retirement. If we're going to take traditional distributions from it, it's going to last, you know, X number of years out to, out to 60, I'm sorry, out to 70, out to 85, whatever it might be. Um, but with this approach, we could illustrate the idea that, listen, having multiple assets and having flexibility in retirement and being able to draw from a non-correlated asset like a whole life uh, insurance policy is going to really benefit your overall strategy. And I think the numbers are really, really quite powerful with the client. We actually ended up taking out more money, right? It was 1.5. Um, the reason for that is the RMD requirement, the percentage that had to be taken out um, on, on a bigger lump sum of money because we, we, we didn't take out the, um, the years prior to RMD requirements. So you, you, you end up taking out essentially uh, more money uh, just because the impact of the RMD is going forward. But the ending balance is really the story here. And this is just a summary of the, of, of the concept itself. So I just wanted to walk you through the marketing piece. I think this is actually one of the really good marketing pieces that Mass Mutual has produced. You can you can certainly use this with a client, uh, just just as I did with with everybody that's on the call today. And again, it's a fairly simple concept, um, but I think it's something that that really resonates and has a lot of power behind it. Especially again when we're talking about um, just creating flexibility and, and, and meeting all the needs, including the, the fear of longevity. Steve, should we hold questions till the end? Sure. Yeah, let's keep, let's keep going. If, I, if there are any questions, um, certainly type them in the question box or raise your hand and then we can, uh, we can come back to you kind of at the end. So uh, either type it in if you have it now, we can touch it on the, on the end or certainly raise your hand at the end and we'll, we'll get to you. Okay, sounds good. All right, so what I want to do, I'm going to come back to that, but I want to talk about what we would typically do as far as a retirement supplement proposal, because again, I think this is a, uh, a subtle nuance or just another variation of this concept that we can communicate with a client. So I've got a male 35 year old, I have a, a whole life legacy 20 pay, which means it's contractually paid up in 20 years. Um, that's not based on a market rate or, or an assumption of, of uh, crediting rate. It's, it's just a contractual uh, paid up policy in 20 years. I just chose 20,000 for a premium simply because it's just an easy number for us to, to look at <laughs> and to add up. Um, but we, you know, typically the premium, anything north of 5,000 is probably appropriate in this space. We're looking for people that are maybe are a little more affluent, um, obviously have an insurance need first, but, but a little more money they're, they're looking for. A place as a place to put their money, you know, as a cash equivalent or even a, a fixed income equivalent, uh, expecting that type of return over time, and that's that's really how we're positioning these products today. So paid up in 20 years. One of the things I really like to do is is point out um, on the guaranteed side of the ledger what the what the client's actually doing. Yes, they're paying a premium, but even in the first year, the 20,000 uh, premium paid to Mass Mutual, you're guaranteed to have about 4,000. So your net cost right there is, is maybe 16. Um, out five years, I get to 100. My net cost here is maybe uh, 34,000 or so. So I, I just try to get them to understand the value of whole life, uh, the power in these guarantees. And so even if we don't pay a dividend, I can continue this process and come down and say, okay, uh, we paid in about 300. At this point, you've got about 304, 305, you're actually netting uh, a positive amount there on the guaranteed side of the ledger, meaning we haven't even paid a dividend. And then on the other side, I can come back and say, you know, where's the crossover on the non-guaranteed side of, of the ledger? So this is just a general setup, I would say. Um, you know, we can get to the actual income solve in retirement, which I'll do now. We say, listen, you put in um, 400,000 over, over 20 years. You're gonna take out something like 78,000 over 15 years, and we can add that up. Um, and of course, that's a tax-free distribution, assuming the policy stays in course and it's not a max. So this is the old traditional setup. 
I wouldn't necessarily deviate from this. I think there's a lot of power in our, our limited pay contracts. We have a 10 pay, a 20 pay. We have a paid up at 65. They're all appropriate in this space. Um, you know, just having this conversation about creating an asset outside of, of the equity space, um, having a death benefit, the advantages of, of the tax-free buildup in life insurance and so on. One of the reports I always run, and of course Carol can run this for you, um, is this, this cash value increase uh, report. This is a real simple way for, for me to communicate what's happening in a, in a different way than what I just did. So I can look in a specific year, uh, in this case it's year five, where I'm giving the, the company $20,000 and they're guaranteeing me 20, uh, 376. So my cash value increase is gonna be more than what I'm paying in. So the, the kind of the analogy of putting, you know, taking money out of the right pocket and putting it in the, into the left applies here. And of course I can do this on the non-guaranteed side as well. And that's gonna happen a little quicker because this, this includes dividends. So this is a simple little report that a lot of our veteran producers use to again, just communicate the, the value of, of what, the, what the client is, is actually doing. Another report I really like too is this monthly life income option. You know, we know that one of the contractual rights in a life insurance policy is the ability to annuitize the cash value at any time. And so, yes, I can show the traditional retirement supplement like I, I, I just went through, and that might make sense. But, but another way of describing that for the client that might resonate is to say, listen, you know, if you get out to say 65, you could turn your cash value into an annuity, and it might pay you something like 32, 44 uh, a month for the rest of your life. So. And of course, these numbers continue to grow as I go forward. I could pick year 70 or, or year 80. You know, again, if people are concerned about running out of money in retirement, listen, at age, at age 75, you know, you could go ahead and turn your, your policy into 56, uh, 58 per month uh, in an annuity. So this is just another way. I, I don't know that they'll necessarily do this, you know, at that point, but this is just another way for me at point of sale to say, listen, you're, you're building up true value in your life insurance policy. and, and and permanent life insurance, whole life insurance, does more than more than one thing, right? Term insurance answers the question, what if you die? And what if you die within that period of time that, that it's in force? Um, but, but whole life insurance answers that question, and it also answers the question, what if you live? And this is kind of the, the what if you live value proposition. So it's another great report to use. Um, of course, the IRRs on cash value, I get down to, say, 65 and I'm north of 4% on a non-guaranteed basis. And again, this is a, this is a um, tax, uh, tax advantage uh, rate of return. So I'd have to think about you know, the potential impact of taxes, where that really, where that really falls, is it 6% or 6.2, depending on the, the tax brackets that they're in. Um, and, and just positioning this again as, hey, listen, this is a, a fixed income, cash equivalent you know, type of yield. We're not trying to compete with equities. We're actually trying to create another asset and solve your life insurance problem or need at the time um, at the time that we can. So um, again, I'll hold questions till the end. I do, I do wanna show you the actual taming using the same example. And we can get as creative as, as we want with these illustrations, of course. I just, I just arbitrarily picked uh, specific years where I assumed there was a down market. So I could sit down with a client and say, listen, you know, here's, here's what you might do after down markets. You might take money from the life insurance policy. I, I again, arbitrarily picked 100,000. You know, we could tailor this to, to their particular needs. But it's very easy to illustrate, and I think very easy for them to understand. And if we're to um, look at their other holdings and say, hey, listen, not only uh, are, you, are you protecting yourself from these, these down markets, but you're actually likely able to continue with more aggressive holdings because you have this as a safety net, right? The reason I get out of equities as I approach retirement is that I don't want the, the variation or the volatility, right? I don't want to get caught retiring, you know, in 2007 holding all of my positions in equities and then the following year lose 40%. So this is a, a really good way to kind of talk to them about being able to hold on to more aggressive uh, maybe equity positions through retirement because they do have this safety net. 
And lastly, let's let's say I had, you know, this is a 35 year old, the person's pretty young. I mean, I can do a similar thing on somebody that's say 50. I'll change my product. I mentioned we have a, a 10 pay whole life. I also have this legacy 65, which of course is paid up at 65. And so for my 50 year old, it's gonna be basically a guaranteed 15 pay uh, premium schedule. And I can do, I can have that same discussion. I, again, I picked 20,000 for annual premium. Uh, my death benefit, of course, is much lower because it's a, the person's older. So I don't get a lot of death benefit leverage, but, it, but, but these products are really made for cash accumulation. So again, I did the same thing. So even somebody that's 50 and closer to retirement, this might still make sense. And in fact, they're probably in a position where they're thinking more about uh, the longevity risk or being more concerned about it. You know, if they had a, a parent or somebody that, you know, outlived their money, this is a, a really good way to, to kind of position the overall strategy. And then finally, I do have one piece that's not in your handout. Steve, I can get this over to you guys. Um, sure. If anybody wants it, or I'll just send it to you and you can distribute it as, as appropriate. But mm -hmm. this is simply just a, a one page, you know, leave behind that just kind of it baits the hook a little bit, I guess, and, and just give the concept um, out to the client or, or potential client in very simple language, you know, taking withdrawals from your uh, retirement accounts during downturns in the market can significantly reduce the value over long, you know, just very simple language. And again, it's just a, it's just a one pager. So I don't, I didn't include that, um, uh, Steve, but I can get it to you. Okay, great. So why don't we, should we open it up to questions? Sure, absolutely. So if, if anyone has any questions, please certainly type them in, uh, raise your hand. I will say, uh, kind of as we're kind of getting the discussion going here, uh, one thing that we see a lot at URL, uh, when we have, you know, we have our independent agents, agencies, and, and people calling in to, help supplement retirement for their clients and using life insurance uh, as a tool in that, you know, we see a lot, Pat, you know, in the indexed universal life area, right? So we'll see sure. like, well, what, what's the best kind of thing here? And they, a lot of people will go from a, maybe from a VUL down to an IUL because of the, maybe the safer environment where we, where you like to say zero is your hero and you have a, a zero floor and a cap of somewhere between 12 and 10. Well, you know, some clients that we find, you know, look at that and they're like, well, I don't know. Or some agents might, might be hesitant because they were around in the eighties um, and sold some ULs that are now blowing up, you know, you know, having that, that cap, uh, that floor and ceiling on the IUL is a nice thing, but there's still a lot of moving parts in that product, right? So um, the company can lower the participation rate on a product. Um, there's a lot of different moving parts that either maybe an agent who's a little bit more conservatively minded or a client um, would, you know, like the idea of a dividend paying whole life where you have the backing of a company like Mass Mutual, an A double plus rated company, a company with a 149 year history of paying dividends. And from our perspective at URL, we, we run a lot of these illustrations side by side. I look at the 35 year old, now 20,000, we get a few of those in here and there to kind of run an annual premium, but the 5,000, the 6,000, uh, you know, the $350 a month kind of solve for death benefit and cash growth, a lot of times when you're looking 25, 30 years out at retirement on these younger individuals, we're seeing this, this mass mutual 20 pay per, or pay to 65 performing right there with the IULs and a lot more stable of a product. Um, so that's a, that's, it, it's pretty impressive. So if you're in that IUL space, and you have a younger individual like this, or even someone 50 looking out 15, 20 years, this is something definitely call us on because we can show those side by side. And um, and it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous product for accumulation, life insurance protection, and even, we didn't touch on it, Pat, um, we have a long-term care rider on the product as well. 
We do, yeah. You can definitely add the long-term care rider to this. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, just a quick comment on the IULs. I and mean, there's nothing inherently wrong, right, with, with those products. It's, you know, VUL, UL, IUL. It really just comes down to funding and expectations and, and whether or not the client, you know, really understands them. And so when I first got into the business um, as an agent with a different company, I sold a lot of variable policies. And, you know, looking back now, I, you know, I can think that maybe a lot of these clients didn't fully understand them. Um, maybe we, we didn't fund them properly, you know. So those are the those are the same pitfalls that you have in the new IUL space. It's you know, are we are we being conservative in our assumptions? Um, are there are there hidden variables, persistency bonuses, and things like this? Sometimes there's multipliers on, on some of the carriers that I have out there, and so you know, it, it, my six percent assumption becomes seven point two, seven point three with all these these non guaranteed right. uh, variables. You know what I mean? Um, the way they they illustrate the loan rate, if you if you select the index loan rate versus the fixed loan rate. Um, it doesn't take into account. So you essentially, if I assume 6% as a crediting rate and my loan rate is 5%, I've got, you know, leverage of 1% there, but it doesn't account for uh, a zero a zero market. So I'm still getting charged 5%, but I'm getting zero if, if, if the index doesn't perform. So there's, there's all kinds of variables in the way those are illustrated. Um, I've seen some really good ones. And, and ironically, they're very close to the whole life premium, <laughs> you know, when I see them yeah. illustrated. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with them, but absolutely, if there's a if there's a uh, a question out there as to how you know whole life can compete, we can we can create illustrations and, and talk to the fundamental differences, the guarantees, and and uh, the dividend paying ability of Mass Mutual as a as an advantage. Yeah, so if you're definitely in that space, um, re reach out. I mean, we. We're at URL. We're going to have all those top options on the IUL space. We can compare it to Mass Mutual's whole life. And I think a lot of times, uh, if you're not familiar, you don't if you don't currently work with Mass Mutual or, or look at the illustrations, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how well it performs next to it. And again, with with a lot more uh, stability be behind that. The the biggest thing I've I sold both policies, 10 pay, 20 pay on the mass mutual side, as well as the index side with multiple carriers. Biggest thing uh, is, I, I think, from your perspective out there in the field who are doing it day in, day out with your clients is, is make sure you're, especially on the permanent products, doing that review with your clients, that annual review and, and reviewing kind of how things are going along. Uh, because the biggest problem with the old ULs is it was kind of a sold a sold with a high interest rate, low low minimum premium or below target premium, and then 15 years went by, 20 years went by without any adjustments and the policies have blown up. And and now we're trying to save those. So it's uh, that's the big thing I like to preach is annual review, policy checkups, and, and just stay in touch with those clients. It's going to pay dividends for you in more ways than not. Um, so uh, I guess in conclusion, I'll keep an eye here. Uh, for any questions, but I wanted to uh, touch base on some of our uh, bonuses and rewards that we have going on right now. Uh, for those new to URL, uh, we have our quick start bonus. Uh, so if you are new to URL or have not written life with URL in the last 24 months, you qualify. So any business you write in the first 90 days would receive the bonus on the screen, uh, depending on the case size. And then for existing agents, uh, we also have our summer bonus program going on now through the end of August. And then lastly, uh, for our Gemini partners, uh, our, we're in the middle of our Q2 uh, 2018 bonus uh, for, for, Q, uh, for Gemini partners. And if you're currently not a Gemini uh, partner and wanted more information on that, you can reach out to me. Um, and I'll be happy to tell you more about our Gemini Partner Program. Training coming up um, in the Life Markets Department, uh, training to help you grow your business on Monday, June 4th. Uh, Matt Alina, our final expense manager, is doing a his final expense first Monday webinar. And then on June 19th, he's having an in-house seminar at our office uh, for Medicare agents. So anyone in that market who wants to learn how to 
cross-market final expense life insurance effectively and compliantly with your Medicare clients. Matt's going to be doing a presentation again on June 19th here at URL's office. And then our first Friday webinar uh, coming up um, for July, we're going to move to the second Friday of the month because it falls right around the July 4th holiday. So that'll be on July 13th. Um, and we are going to touch base with Applicant, which is one of our quick and easy online application solutions and quoting systems. Um, so if you like online apps, things like that, uh, it's an online quoting system and uh, app system that's, that's very easy to use. Uh, Joey Fry from our Life Markets Department will be uh, conducting that presentation. So if you have any cases that you're working on, have any questions after the meeting today, uh, regarding what we reviewed, uh, please reach out to myself and Joey Fry. We'll be happy to help you with uh, illustrations, um, any risk assessments that you have, or any questions you have on the Mass Mutual portfolio of products. Uh, we're here to help you with that. And again, if you had any questions, now would be the time. And uh, if you don't, certainly. Um, look to the next life markets meeting coming up and we and give us a call with any cases you're working on and thank you for